G'day, Chris here and welcome back to ClickSpring. One of the tools that I've come to realise is quite important for a home foundry is a decent pyrometer. It's certainly possible to eyeball the molten metal and have a rough idea of what the temperature is. And for many projects, that's enough to get the job done. But there's definitely something to be said for taking a more scientific approach, particularly if troubleshooting a casting. A thin profile casting will likely need to be poured at a temperature that's quite a bit hotter than for a thick profile. Yet there won't be much to give away that temperature difference to the naked eye, making a pyrometer pretty much an essential piece of kit. But getting one need not necessarily break the bank, because here's an easily made and affordable design that's suitable for temperatures up to roughly 1200 degrees Celsius. It consists of a mild steel frame, a digital K-type thermometer and a K-type thermocouple. The frame is MIG welded from 16mm tubing and the handle is from an old welding hammer. I've located it on the frame to ensure that the whole thing is well balanced in use and reaches easily into the furnace from a normal standing position. The thermocouple mounts on a mild steel insert that's been slid inside the tubing and then welded into place. And the cable is fed in through a hole in the insert, through the frame and then back to the thermometer. Now there is one more component required to make this a more durable tool, and that's a carbon sleeve to protect the thermocouple probe. As you can see from the condition of this one, it's exposed to the brunt of what is a fairly extreme environment, and it slowly ablates over time, getting thinner and thinner. But nevertheless, it very effectively protects the stainless steel probe from contacting molten metal. And most importantly, the highly corrosive flux and dross at the top of the melt simply slides off it. Of course, eventually the sleeve wears out or cracks and has to be replaced. But if continually protected by a carbon sleeve, the thermocouple will likely provide quite a long service. And if you're wondering what would happen without the carbon sleeve, well, let's just say it doesn't end well for the probe. I pushed my luck with this one during a bronze melt and it was nuked within a matter of seconds. But it's given me a good excuse to go through how to replace it. So here's the process. I started with a new K-type thermocouple probe and a new 10mm carbon rod. The rod of course is very brittle and it's easily snapped off to length. It was then mounted in a three-jaw chuck on the lathe and drilled out to the clearance size for the probe. A short section was then further drilled out to the tapping size for the thread on the probe and then carefully tapped. OK, so that's the sleeve pretty much done. Next up, the new thermocouple needs to be installed within the frame. The cable is fed through the frame and the spring has a reasonably secure grip on the steel insert. But additionally, the cable has a rather stiff braided metal shield. So once it's fed through the body of the frame and crimped in a few places, it effectively prevents the probe from being able to move forward. The thermocouple does have a polarity, so it needs to be connected the right way around. But you'll quickly know if it's incorrect because the temperature will go down instead of up as you heat it. If this happens, then just reverse the leads in the connector. Now the thermometer needs to come off fairly often for battery changes and so on. So I've gone for a simple Velcro patch to hold it in place. And I generally just tie off the excess cable underneath. And that's pretty much it. The new carbon sleeve threads neatly onto the probe and the spring provides a small measure of protection from shocks and inadvertent knocks when it's in use. Without any heat applied, the unit should be showing the ambient air temperature and then a quick test with a torch should show the temperature rising as expected. When in use, the tool is easily held in heavy gloves 
and if you make the length of the frame right for your height and furnace dimensions, then you can get it to be quite well balanced in the hand as the probe sits in the crucible. It's a very useful addition to the home foundry that takes away a lot of the guesswork and makes it much easier to just enjoy the fun of pouring metal. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.